Life is a consistent battle to create order in a world of disorder. Humans are continuously in war with an ever mighty force we call Mother Nature. The manner we're going to explore today has lost its battle after its caretaker lost their interest and rose to heaven. Once inhabited by a wealthy French family, consisting of a loving couple with three children, the place has been in the family for over two centuries and has been transferred from father upon son. The family had their roots deeply strangled in the politics of the local municipality. Their influence was felt throughout the region and many stories circulate around town that the family was involved in corruption and bribery. Stories are just stories, until they are proven. Today we will take you inside of their abandoned mansion and we will try to uncover the events that led up to its abandonment. Are you ready for an intriguing adventure? I have my special attire on, but that's because I want to do an integration for a sponsor and I am very happy that this week's video is sponsored by Masterworks. I know that a lot of people that watch my channel are interested in art, but have you ever considered investing in art? You probably hear like investing in art, isn't that only reserved for the richest of the richest of people in the whole world? Actually the answer to that is no. Let me sit down and let me explain you what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm gonna get comfortable here because this is gonna be interesting. So Masterworks is a company that lets people like you and me, normal people, invest in a contemporary art market. A market class that has outperformed the S&P 500 by 164% since the time spent from 1995 and 2021. And they even feature artworks where you can invest in like Banksy Monkey Works and Pablo Picasso. Isn't that just crazy? So all you need to do is visit masterworks.io, make an account and simply buy a piece of your favorite artwork. And once you bought your artwork, you have the option to hold it until Masterworks sell or sell it yourself on their secondary market. And Masterworks, they are literally masters at selling art. In 2020, they made 32% return on investment for the investors. And in 2021, they did 31%. And although the stock market is a very unpredictable place, art has always been one of the best investments of all time. And especially in the markets of 2022. So go buy art. You can get priority access to Masterworks by clicking the first link in the description. I want to thank Masterworks one more time because they make it possible for me to travel the world and document all the things that are left behind. So thank you very much and let's now start an epic documentary. Mother Nature is a fierce woman. She exempts nobody. We are standing here today in the backyard of a totally overgrown French country house, also known as a French manor. That's the word that they use to describe grand French places. Over the decades that it has been left behind, Vines and dawns are growing everywhere here in this backyard. And as you can see, the house is now totally overgrown. I welcome you all back to another episode by the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie and I'm really excited for this one because it's going to be a very special episode. The manor that we see here in front of us used to be of the family Dubois. A man and a woman 
living here with three children, a grand place, and these people, they had money and power. So, okay, I'm gonna find my way through this backyard and show you everything that's left behind in this beauty. It's sad to see places like this left in this state. It gets me every single time after all these years of exploring. They can still find places like this and nobody cares about them anymore. Oh, but it's, it's actually quite nice to walk through this backyard. It's very natural and you can feel that nature is coming back here, taking over what man built and what man took from her. The chimney on this place is actually very, very large. I love also how they built this, this manor. As you can see, the stones are exposed over here on the wall and the vines are growing in it. Let's go to the front of this place and let's see what it looks like. I have to make my way to this overgrown pathway covered with all these dorns. When you're an explorer, you have to deal with it. You get stung by dorns like every single time you're exploring. Oh, it's stuck in my camera. Wow. We now find ourselves at the front of the manor. Oh, there's a huge greenhouse covering the length of this manor, as you can see. And it's designed in a very particular way. Very, very Frenchy, as I must say. And again, I can point out all the chimneys that are around this place. I can count four, one, two, three, one behind there, and the last one up there. Wonderful to see this place. Really, really wonderful. This must have been the biggest greenhouse that I filmed on my channel. The trees are already growing back and taking over this place. Wow. I think there used to be a statue right in there. It probably has fallen out. And this is the front entrance way where you go into the house. Now, totally been taken over. So let's try to make our way through there. And right into the house, into the greenhouse. <laughs> Look at that, the plants are just coming inside. And when you walk in here, you are immediately welcomed by this wonderful chandelier holder, no, candle holder, excuse me, lantern here in the middle of the hallway. Wow. And also, these tinted glass windows, I like them very much. Give a lot of character to this building. Let's see the greenhouse. So the family Dubois used to sit here probably a lot, enjoying nature through glass. Even had some windows in here that they could open and close. Oh, hey Martijn. Martijn is exploring with me today. Holes in the roof. Wow, look at this side of the greenhouse. Looks like there are no people on earth anymore. Like we are the last ones. And nature is slowly taking back what's hers. Lovely. These are all locked, I think. They seem very, very locked. Okay, I saw one door that's open over there to the left and uh, let me just check this last one and otherwise we will make our way into the house over there. Okay everybody, I'm really excited for this one to open this door right in front of me here and reveal the decades of history that are left behind, behind it. Okay, let's go for it together. Let's, let's open up this beauty. Here's the beautiful door handle, very low actually. And this opens up into the hallway of the place. Wow, let's venture inside and let's see what's left behind. And the first thing we noticed here to the right is a hall tree. 
where the former owners, the Dubois family, used to hang up their coats. You can see this was the man's coats. And this was the woman that lived here, her rain jacket still left here, hanging on the hall tree that leads us right into the hallway of this place. Welcome inside everybody of this wonderful mansion. Oh, the first thing I notice is this little basket and it's filled with wallpaper for some sort of weird reason. It looks like a picnic basket of some sort. And behind it, we also have this wooden wafer, this fan, as you would call it. First thing we also see is a candle, half lit candle with some beautiful design standing here. Hmm. What a wonderful and peaceful hallway we have over here. And underneath this rainage drain, we have this beautiful bench completely carved from 1619 it says on here 1619 that's 400 years ago this bench has probably been made and it's still standing here in this abandoned manner wow what do we have in here just some general artifacts left behind some cloths not much that's interesting okay let's let's walk into this hallway and i think in front of us here we see the doorway where the people used to enter into this is the part of the backyard where i couldn't enter into because it was completely overgrown but over here we can see the front doorway actually probably the people came into the house over here now been covered by spider webs over the years that nobody has been in this place. Let me turn around and show you this hallway. What a beauty, everybody. What a beauty. What catches me first is that there is a lamp post in the middle of this hallway, right on the staircase. This would have been lit up, made this hallway feel very special to walk up and the wallpaper accompanies the stairways so well. They had all these pots and flasks standing here on the steps of the stairway. And then down here we have this umbrella holder, a very unique piece again, made completely of steel with this lantern in there. Wow. This looks like some sort of a train or mining lantern. Probably would you light up a candle in there or something with oil. <sighs> Wallpaper is slowly peeling off. Like outside, inside, nature is also taking this place back. <sighs> and then we have this water reservoir with these two faucets here. Don't know the purpose of it, but it's a very nice artifact. Oh, here in the middle of the chest, we have a painting of the house from the outside. Probably this was, yeah, you can definitely see this doorway here. It's the doorway that we see here in front of us. And it looks very neat from this side as well. Unfortunately, I couldn't come there. I couldn't reach it, unfortunately. A mask, an African mask, hanging here on the wall. These people were probably very rich and they most likely also traveled the world back in that day. It must have been wonderful traveling the world in those time periods. So peaceful, so calm and so untouched. We have a walking cane hanging here on the wall, on these coat hangers, an antler of a deer as well. Wow, this was already a very interesting hallway. And let's now go through this door into the other room. The door is very stuck and that leads us 
into the bedroom of the house. It's a very strange thing to have your bedroom right here next to the hallway. I've actually not seen that in many places around France. Mostly they do it because the people that live here get too old and are not able to walk up the stairway anymore to the top floor. That's the reason why they place their bedroom down here. But it seems like this bedroom has been completely designed to be in this room and it most likely has always been here. Huh. And that's a very strange thing. Why did they do it? We have a painting of a woman right above here. Monique says over there on a the signature. Wow, she was a very lovely lady. And what caught my attention immediately when I came into this room was this beautiful vanity. Really a unique piece that right out of a movie. There's, there used to be a stair. There needs to be a chair in front of here, but I can't locate it anywhere. But the, the woman of the house would sit here in the morning, make herself beautiful, put on some perfume, wash her face with water in this basket and in this, in this jug. She would pour it out, wash her face with this washing cloth and this very primitive but unique setup. What I like most about it is that there is a marble top up here. We also have a little notebook. It says even on the notebook, it says notes in English, not in French. And these are some notes from the former people that lived here. A woman, Alexander Pouchet. Wow. That's a lovely piece. I was looking at this blue bottle over here and I immediately noticed, let me get it a little bit closer. If you can see it right, it says sparkling water in English on there. Bottled by New York Seltler Water Corporation in Detroit, Michigan. It costed two uh, dollars and it's 25 ounces. Wow, it even had still some pressure on there. I didn't know, don't know if you've heard that, but sparkling water in a blue bottle. I love it. I really do. Here are some tools, some veils probably for the nails. Wow. And then we have this bamboo mirror above it. And even some perfume bottles left here to the sides. Right next to the vanity, we also have a little library of the former person that lived here. I actually don't know their first names, that's unfortunate, but I hope to find out some more while we explore this place. Another little storage bin, I believe. Oh no, this is also one of those water reservoirs. Okay, you can see the little faucet down here. This was a complimentary basket where you could put the water inside. And even the wood for this fireplace is still left there. Back in the day, they would provide every single room with a fireplace like this because they didn't have central heating. And we also saw it on the outside. There are multiple chimneys throughout this house, uh, on the roof of this house. So there's also multiple fireplaces throughout the house. Okay. We have yet another wonderful painting above the fireplace here. When people took a picture back in that day, it was a very special occasion. You would dress up, you would put it in your agenda. You would be excited for the day to go take pictures because this almost never happened back then. It was a very rare occasion. Some people back in the 18, 1900s probably only have one or two pictures of their entire life left behind. It's a very French looking man. Tino Rossi, it says on there. Wonderful. Can another look at this wonderful bedroom before we go further. A 
beautiful closet worked with these copper designs all over it. I just love it. Let's open it up. Let's see. Let's see if it opens up because it has a lock on there. It seems to be very closed, everybody. It seems to be very closed. <laughs> I'm trying. No, I can't get it open and I won't force it to get open because that's not me. <sighs> a cross. And there used to be a little emblem, a religious emblem on here, but it's, it's gone. It's away now. Wallpaper is also very nice. And here we have that bedroom, but it seems like a single bed just for one person. Just for one person. Still made after all those years that this place has been abandoned. The bed is a complementary to the wardrobe. The designs on it are similar. And I always love these little benches that they put in front of these beds. People could sit here in the morning, easily put on their clothes, put on their socks, and then they would hop out of the house and go on with their day. Even a piano to play music is left in this room. I have to take a closer look at it. Le Edge, it's made in Paris. Does it still play? Just barely, barely plays. It's been left for a long time. It seems like we also have some encyclopedias on top of here. These are historical French encyclopedias. You can see here the interior of a castle. Historical artifacts are explained and depicted in this book. Here we can see those African masks that we also saw in the house coming back. The one in the hallway. Wow. Historical encyclopedias. RBQ painted this. That's the signature on there. And we have yet another wardrobe in this room as well. Oh, that seems to be locked. It seems to be very locked. Not able to open that anymore. So we have just seen the entire bedroom and now it's time to make our way through this doorway. But first off, look above it. It's the sort of same picture or painting as we saw on the other side of the room. And I believe that these people were the grandparents of the place. Because this is something very common that they would do in French places. They would place their grandparents as an ode of respect somewhere in the house. And mostly in the bedrooms. Let's open up this beauty. And let's reveal what's behind it. Oh, a very narrow doorway that leads right into a living room. A very special room of the house, as you can see. Wow. Let me just first give you a grand overview of this place. Here are the people would be at night or in the evening, enjoying themselves after a long day of work. I really enjoy the style of this room. Just looking at it is a pleasure for me. The wallpaper. Let's first go to this wallpaper. And I think it's not wallpaper, it's some sort of a carpet. No, it's, it's wallpaper, but it looks like some sort of a carpet. It's just meticulously designed and placed in here. It gives this room its real character. Okay, there is another bed inside of this room. A very teeny tiny children's bed. Wow. Why is this one in here? Probably a child slept in this room. They were with three people, a mother and a father and three children. But the children probably didn't sleep in here anymore. Maybe it was a grandchild that came over from time to time. We have these hand-drawn paintings 
hanging or on the wall of French colonialism. Here we can see the Arc de Triomphe in Paris hanging on the wall. Wow. And then we have this bureau right here in front of us. Again, a very wonderful piece, completely carved into detail. Look at this one. We have these lion heads to either side of it, giving this piece character. Let's try to open it up. There we go. Oh, look. Look, look how it prevails itself. Wonderful, it just comes out of the, of the furniture. It retracts when I put it back and open it up like that. Wow, we have to be very careful with this one because it's probably very old. There's nothing, oh, there's just a few things left in here. These playing cards. This looks like a shaver and yes, it is. Shaver from a man, a razor blade, as you would call it. We have some artifacts above here, a little statue. Wow. Some chairs. I think this chair used to belong right in front of this bureau, like this, as you can see. That's a nice combination, to my opinion. Some leather upholstery all around it. Wow. And then right next to the bureau, we have this upholstery chair over here. Look at this one. Some Asian people depicted on there. Wonderful upholstery all around it and then some wood carvings in the top. But unfortunately, woodworms have already been taking over this piece. Here in the corner, we have this cabinet standing. Wow, it's actually a very nice cabinet, but they used it to block the door behind it. That's crazy, right? And all over this room, there are paintings and pictures and drawings depicted on the walls of French times from the 16th, 1700s. You can see in here some battleships, some pirate ships. Paris depicted above there. Here we can see this lady. It says 1831 on the signature. I would have loved to live in those times and experience how it must have been back then. A wonderful piano that still plays left here and then let's head over to the main area of this room the sitting area with the grand mirror in between wow right in front of us here we have this little yeah desk i would say with some books on there again some encyclopedias depicted here oh what nice drawings in there let me just turn this around and show you the insides of these books. Yes, this is definitely another encyclopedia left here. To my honest opinion, this corner of the room is the most spectacular with the mirror and the fireplace over there. Let's just have a closer look at it because yeah, this piece is out of this world. It belongs in a castle. It belongs to be preserved, not left abandoned in a place like this. They have these statues of the front and back of a lady depicted here to either side of the mirror, made out of plaster, really lovely. And then we have this copper or no, also a plaster piece that's completely been painted with a layer of gold from these two people at a dance party probably. Oh, it says Une Play de Paris on the bottom of it. As a dance party in Paris. An oil lamp right next to here. It's the little wheel 
to turn on and off the, uh, the fire and to control its strength. Wow. He even has these faces in the feet of the oil lamp. Wonderful, everybody. Look here in the fireplace. There are even still some blocks of wood left in there. Isn't that just crazy? And these crests of armor that they depicted in there are also very unique. Spider webs are taking over this fireplace right now. And what I noticed right here in front of us, or of the fireplace, is to my opinion, one of the most beautiful praying chairs that I've ever seen. Let me just show you how one of these was used. So let me just set up the camera right here. I can see the praying chair. So, and you would sit like this with your feet or with your knees right up to it. And this is where you would place your hands. You could just pray like this. Just do all your prayers. And that's how it, why it's made this low. And this is exactly made to put your elbows on. And then you can fold your hands and do a prayer. Wonderful pieces of furniture, very ancient. Even though I'm not religious, I really respect how they made things like this back in the day. Wow. Let's place it back nicely right in front of the fireplace. And also the upholstery that's on there. Here at the bottom we have this cross, this yellow cross, and then this beautiful colored upholstery all over it. The woodwork. And then at the top we have another piece of upholstery with some letters in there. Fascinating, just fascinating. Here to the right, to the left, there is more furniture. You have this couch over there, this, this little sitting sofa where the former owners could have a rest at night. Wow, beautiful upholstery again, all over it, prevailing itself. I love the colors that we see throughout this house, on the wallpaper, on the benches, on the praying chair we just saw. Every piece of furniture in here is just a happy depiction. Wow. Here we can see some animals, some mythical animals actually, because this animal has wings roaming around in a mythical landscape. Beautiful upholstery all over it. Oh, and I love this one as well. You can see a lady with an umbrella roaming the gardens of a castle or an, a an Asian palace. You can see here behind here somewhere, Japan, China, Korea. Wow. A dragon on the left of this man. <laughs> Wonderful pieces of furniture, to my opinion. Oh, I haven't shown you the outside yet. Let me do that right now. So uh, this is how you would open the door up, uh, the window up. With these latches. Oh, oh, this one is really stuck. No, let's not open this one up. Let's take the other one. And let me show you the outside of this place. Oh yeah, this one is open, okay. Here was the backyard that I was just inside. Look at this. The people would overlook the gardens and the fields behind the house, but now that's not possible anymore because it's completely overgrown by nature. I love being out here, listening to the birds, seeing the leaves being blown around. Isn't that just wonderful? And then we have one last thing in this room, and that's this big library, this big bookcase here at the end of it. At the top of the bookcase, they depicted this globe that's completely carved out. In here, we even have like a little bound book carved into the bookcase. So this one is especially made to hold these books. As you can see, these people, they were enormously rich. Being able to acquire furniture like this back in that day must have cost a fortune. Let's open this beauty up. And they all say, around the globe, tour du monde. They're probably about culture, voyages, the, the travels of France, all the voyages and colonialism of France are explained in here. 
just amazing. If I had more time, I would take a seat in this room and just read through this bookcase. And I believe most of you would do the same as I would do. Let's do it together, everybody. It would be so amazing to explore places like this with my fans and with everybody watching these videos. But I can take you with me. I'm taking you with me right now, but only virtual. So yeah, it's sort of the same. Let's go further now and let's see the remainder of the house. I'm back in the hallway right now and I just noticed here on top of this chest, I saw this enormous key laying around and look at the size of it. It's as big as my hand palm, probably even bigger. And I was wondering where this key was used for. I don't see a hole on this chest here or anywhere. So probably maybe somewhere from a castle or something like that but I'm not sure. Okay, after covering those two rooms, it's now time to go over here and venture through this door into the other part of this perucular home. Wow, the first thing that we notice when we walk inside of this room is this enormous gold-plated mirror right here in front of us. What a magnificent piece. It probably used to be somewhere in the house, but they placed it later on in this room. Fascinating design. The crown on there, it looks like a shell in here. Like a seashell. Wow. And they also had this enormous pillar standing here, probably for a boost or something like that to be placed on. I'm finding myself right now in the dining room of the place where the family most likely had dinner together. I can still see them sitting here around the table, enjoying themselves. That must have been a wonderful sight back in the day. Okay. Above us here, we have this beautiful brass chandelier that would lit up this room back in the day. And on the walls, all the plates are still hanging with all very intrigued designs on them. Oh, there's some sort of a riddle here. You have to decipher all the different artifacts and items that are on there to probably make a phrase of it. <laughs> I see a boar in there, I see a sheep, I see a boat. <laughs> Crazy. Let me show you something. I, I love it. Look at this. This is actually all built in cabinets. Very typical for the country of France. Probably all the plates. Yes, all the plates. All stored in here. And these were the special plates. The plates for special occasions. They even have a little emblem on there on the back. Niels, it says on there. Long Y. Wonderful. What's in this one? Here are all the glasses. Lovely to see. Let's close that up. You can even lock them. Ooh. We have this lamp over here to the side. But there's something very strange about it. There is a sort of greenish liquor in there. Look at this. Inside of the lamppost, probably they put some water or something else in there to keep it down, to keep it sturdy. It's very heavy now. <laughs> wow, I would never mix electricity with water like that, but these people did it. Wonderful painting. We have also a built-in cabinet above here that's completely empty. But I was also looking at this book here. Grand Livre, it says on there. The Grand Book. It's translated to English. Ah, yes, this was their accountancy book for the household. Look at this. All the expenses of the house are in. Here they say for X, 600 francs. That's a bit much, I think. Maybe it was not accurate, but X, bread, all the things are written down in here. And they would keep their accountancy in this book. Oh, we even have some games that would play in this room. 
left in here. A puzzle, jigsaw puzzle. Lovely. An upholstery chair right next to it. And then we have the grand dinner table where the people would have dinner together in the evening. An ox, a woman pulling an ox. This is an emblem from 1925 on there. And then here to the side of the dining room, we have this big fireplace. What I love about it is that they had these little tapestries above it. Look at this, this depicts a French garden giving presents to the kings and queens of that era. Wow. Some plants from the garden, some dorns from the garden actually. Or is this ivy? Notice, I'm not sure what kind of plant this is, excuse me. Wow. A wonderful fireplace underneath as you can see the tools are still left behind to turn the blocks of wood and even the bellow is down there oh, look at this one can I open it up there's even still some wood in there wow, there's still some wood <sighs> okay and then right next to it we have this enormous bench and it's the same one as in the hallway a little bit bigger than the hallway one Again, lovely carvings on there, faces all around, probably also from the 1800s, still left in this room. I love this one. And above there, they had these viking horns hanging on the wall, and this one is made into a fish, as you can see. Even the shapes of the fish are in there. They're really 3D, they have some relief on there. A cigar box with still some cigars in there. Look at this. Was this a cigar? I think this big roll here was a cigar or still is a cigar to this day. You can fold it open. Yes, there is a cigar in there, but it's deteriorating. I'm gonna put it back nicely in there. Let's put this also back into the box. <laughs> wow, we even have an alligator one and then this face with this face in there. Lovely everybody, very very lovely. Oh, over here we have some pictures. I told you that there were three uh, family members or three children and as you can see there are two girls on here and one boy. This is an old picture but it's taken in front of the house. You can see it from the design on there. Very lovely. A child on here, hanging on the wall. And I think we're coming into the kitchen area right now. Oh my God, we have another family picture here. Oh, I, I saw something. I think that this is the children when they are older. You can see the mother, the daughter, the son, and the other daughter. And they're the same ones as on this picture. Fascinating. Those are things I want to see while I'm exploring abandoned places. Isn't that just wonderful? And then we wander into the kitchen. A very ordinary kitchen for a house or a mansion, I should say, like this one. Would they have servants? Is that a possibility? Hmm. I don't know. A very teeny tiny sink with the towel still hanging there and even the dishes unwashed still in the drying rack. Forks and knives and spoons that they would use inside of this house. The boiler. Huh. And all the products that they would use in the house are also still here. Wow. This kitchen is crazy, everybody. It doesn't match the house at all. Look at the cooking top. <laughs> so primitive. All the tea kettles are still up there. Let's open up this fridge. <gasps> all the food is still in there. No way. Oh my God. Tuna. <coughs> I'm gonna close this up, everybody. <coughs> That's horrible. One tip while exploring abandoned places, 
never open a fridge. <laughs> oh, that was crazy. Okay, <laughs> I need to go out of this room because the smell is horrible. But I noticed something very wonderful here on the wall. We have this collection of pictures of the people that once used to live in this place, all left here on the wall. And as you can see, this is the dining room that we were just inside. And the people are sitting around the table, just as I imagined it, how it used to be back in the day. The children of the household, the grandmother, their marriage picture. Wow. Here they are in New York with the One World Trade Center behind them. Fascinating. Oh, and we can see the mirror hanging above somewhere. This is the mirror that was in the dining room. I told you that it's, I thought it was somewhere else, that it belonged somewhere else in the house. Fascinating. Oh, I think we are ending up in the garage over here. Yes, we are, because there is a bicycle, Leslie. The garden furniture and everything is in here. And even here in the garage, they had a fireplace to heat up this room nicely. And the man of the house was probably working in here. Oh my God, this looks like an owl. Yes, it is. It's a completely dried up owl that they probably found somewhere around the gardens of the house. <laughs> what a place. Okay. Utility room. This seems to have been the utility room of the household where everything would be fixed and yeah, maybe also the servants of the house would work in here. Very interesting. Guarding equipment, all the tools and everything is just left in here. Like they don't care about it anymore. <laughs> Even a handbag of somebody. Oh, and this is the barbecue for the household. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful room. I see a stairway up here. I'm very curious to find out where this leads us. Oh, this is a very ordinary, again, part of the house. I love these kind of light switches that we have here on the wall. Where does this lead us into? Okay, a very tiny room. Maybe this used to be a servant's room when they were still working for the family. Exposed beams, unfinished walls, definitely not an important room for the house. <sighs> Fireplace down there. Okay, there's one last place in the house that we need to go to and that's I think the upstairs but I believe it's the attic. So let's go there. Let's go up this beautiful stairway to the last floor of this place. Or the only upstairs floor actually. <laughs> well you can see that the wallpaper has been peeling off over the years that this place has been abandoned. Oh my god. Oh and I also see a safe here in the corner of the upstairs, hallway to the upstairs. With a combination lock, an alphabetic combination lock. Fascinating. Oh, it even still opens up. It probably holds treasures in there. It's made in Paris. Beautiful. Oh, that wonderful wallpaper just peeling off the ceiling. And that leads us to the attic, everybody. The last quarter of the house that we are gonna explore. Let's, let's, let's make it count, let's do it. Oh, the first thing that I see is that this thermostat here on the wall, Robin Serge Pharmacia, it says on there, beautifully made, very old. And now we go under up, ooh. On the attic and the first thing that I see is it at first looked like a gun but 
No, it's a harpoon. It's a spare fishing harpoon. Wow. Look at this. The harpoon is still in there even. <laughs> Crazy. And it seems like they stored a lot of furniture up here on this attic. I also love how it's designed with the exposed wood and the beams that we see. Look at this. Lots and lots of furniture that used to be in the house has been stored up here. Here to the right of us, we have this baby crib. Wonderful baby crib with designs on there. Statue of a dog here to the left. And even the swimming pool that the children used to use is still left up here. This is the box of the swimming pool. <laughs> A lamp that used to be in the house, but now has been stored up here. People collect so much stuff throughout their lives. And they just all think that they need it forever. And they store it here on their attics. All the antiques that once were in the house are all stored up here. This attic goes on and on and on. Oh, I love these travel suitcases that we have here. Lovely, and even some toys of the children. You can see a duck down there. I'm gonna take it. It's a toy duck. <laughs> what a lovely piece. The rollerblades of the children are up here. <laughs> and this used to look like a sofa, like the sides of a sofa, an upholstered sofa. Yeah, the window is open. We can get a glimpse from the mansion from the outside. Let me turn it. Yes, now you can see it. Beautiful mansion. I see another doorway over here that's held close by this latch. And that just opens up into nowhere. You don't want to step out accidentally through this door, you just don't. But it was to move heavy and big things onto the attic. I've now taken you all around the house, showing you this beautiful piece and all the artifacts that are left in it. I want to thank you all for watching this week's video. It was a wonderful exploration here in the countryside of France. If you liked this week's video, please comment down below what you thought about it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and like the video and that would do me a great pleasure. There's also a link in the description there you can support me. Patreon is the way how I finance these videos and you can help me out with that. Probably even with just a cup of coffee. That's enough for me. And I want to thank you and I will see you all next week in another epic exploration. I thank you very much. Bye bye. Love you all.